Welcome back to another Autism video. It's your boys, the Autism boys, and we're joined by the legend, Donnie, elevate yourself. Today we're gonna to be doing some elite level volleyball training. You ready, Donnie? I'm ready. Let's get after it. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, coach, as you know, I'm a libero myself. And it wasn't until recently where I took a little more weightlifting or training on the court, a little yes, more seriously. There you go. It took me a little while, don't get me wrong. It's liberos out there. We love to kind of chill during the wave sessions. You know. Libero diet? Get, yeah, libero diet, get the five pound dumbbells. But now I'm taking a little more serious. What would you say the biggest mistake is for liberos um, in terms of weightlifting? And should they be a lot different from the weightlifting and the regiments that hitters and other positions have? Yeah, great question. Well, first, I congratulate you for adding strength and conditioning into your workouts. Uh, the biggest mistake is that a lot of liberos, they just adapt jump training workouts to libero workouts. But if you notice, liberos move in completely different directions. So jumpers, blockers, forces produce upward. Liberos don't really have to jump high. I mean, unless you're really trying to get that backpedaling high off the hand squat, yeah. it's more about multi-planar movement. And so the first one is, the big mistake is liberos don't train all angles. Okay, we, they mainly stay in what we call the sagittal plane, which is squats, deadlifts, lunges, and they don't do enough frontal plane or multi-planar in different directions. Yeah. So that's mistake number one. Mistake number two is mobility. One of the most underrated aspects. So I'm sure you guys see this all the time. When people pepper, you can tell whether they have good hip, ankle, knee mobility. One of these, Right, shooting the ball forward, hips high, no quad and knee engagement, very limited ankle mobility. And so getting used to these deep ranges of motion are really critical. And that's what Japan is really good at. They're super flexible. Sometimes they even, I can't do this, but sometimes they even pass with the knees inside, not because they're trying to get here, but sometimes when you're just trying to get the ball up, you can't think about what position your body needs to get in, you just need to get down. And that's where a lot of injuries happen is when we perform a movement we are not prepared for, yeah. right? I, I always said that for me, a lot of the time, the biggest, all right, if I had to choose like one area to make sure that I'm loose as a libero, mm -hmm. it's my groin right here. Perfect, sure. yep. If, if I feel that tight, everything else is not doing well. If this is good, yeah. everything else is doing good. Mm -hmm. so I, I totally feel that for sure, um, yeah. in terms of working out and whatnot. <laughs> With that being said, let's get in some exercises, yeah? Okay, sounds good. So the first thing we're gonna go over is what I call libero mobility. So mobility movements specifically to help liberos get into the positions they need so they can get there faster without injury. Um, so we're gonna go over that with, with Gage here and uh, we'll see how his mobility is. So the first one, assuming you've already done your dynamic warm up, it's the duck walk. Have you ever done duck walks before? I imagine it's like this, yeah. So the duck walk is actually getting into a low position and rolling my knee and ankle. And so my hips and head are level, slight forward lean. And so what it does is it allows me to work on my ankle mobility, stretching my patella tendon, my hip mobility as I cycle around, okay? So let's actually use this line to see if we can do it in a straight line. So I'll stand next to you. So go ahead and stand over there. Right I'll have you go right there. We'll face that wall. Okay. I'll turn to your I'll left over here. Yeah. yeah, and so you're gonna kind of stay on that line. And so I'll sh we'll go the full version, and then if we, if we struggle with it, we can always regress it. And by the way, it, it's very normal for people to, to have to do some of the level ones and twos, okay? okay? So first- on my, on my toes here? Yeah, first we wanna see if we can sit. Okay. So we kind of get like a nice stretch and use your elbows to push your knees out. So that's kind of a general range of motion. And then next one is we're kind of alternating. So we rarely ever wanna go straight into end ranges of motion. Uh, we always want to ease into it, okay? So now we're kind of loose, kind of good. So the first one is I'm going to rock forward. So without my left knee touching the floor, roll onto my right foot and then bring my left foot in front. Yeah. So here. Uh-huh. Yep. And, we're and then focusing on a lot of hips right now? Mm-hmm. Hip, ankle, and knee. So it's everything. And then if you can, try to keep your track narrower so your steps close okay. together. That will help increase the range of motion. And really roll that. Yeah, good. Uh huh. Good. <laughs> yeah, you got the hand position down. Good. Okay, go and relax. So I'm just curious, what sensations did you feel in the duck walk? So for sure, definitely my knees, but also my groin as well. Like when I'm moving here. Mm -hmm. I'm moving here. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Obviously, I feel more. I don't know the exact position here. Mm -hmm. And then when I move here. Yep. Right here. What is this? Is the, That's the vastus medialis. This yeah. this this uh, muscle right there. Got you. So then I here. Good. Yeah. 
but it feels good. Definitely, I've never seen it before in my life. Awesome. And I definitely feel it because a little before this, I was a little sore. I was like, ooh. But now, I feel like I can play now. It's, it's, it's a great dynamic way to kind of get your body moving those end ranges. Right. Now, here's the other part is as you get more advanced, we want to get even lower and longer steps. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go over here. So we're going to start in the same position, and we want to go long as possible without bobbing my head. And so you get that stretch and that groin in that forward position here. Right okay. before I lock out, like when I feel my leg, I don't want to lock out, right? No, no, you, yeah, this one you're not going to lock out your knees. Good. Yeah, it, it is, it is balanced, nice. Feel that roll, excellent. That's pretty good. I feel like I'm bobbing this. Really. A little bit, but that's okay, a little bit foot drag, but that's, that's pretty good for the most advanced one. It's definitely what I tried bring it across. Uh-huh. Man, that was that pretty good. good. That feels good though, I feel good, oh man. Like hit now. <laughs> and we'll go into this later about like dynamic stability and mobility go hand in hand. You saw how Gage did such a good job. When he's here, momentarily my foot is off the floor. And so can I hold that position on one leg in the end range as I'm passing, right? So now we're gonna go the backwards version. So we're gonna start there. Okay, same thing. It's about covering distance without bobbing my head, yeah. Nice, pretty good. And you feel that ankle just compress in the front. Nice. I feel like when I'm in the air, I'm not as stable. Mm -hmm. And so is that like the goal, the end goal is to make sure, for, I guess for our listeners out there, is like how fast are you trying to get that foot back? We want to be control. To get... Gotcha. Yeah, so we want to go. Oh, shooting it back. We want to go as gradual as possible. So that's that muscle working on that knee stability. Because yeah, for sure, your body is like, this is not fun. Yeah, and then yeah, wants to shoot back. <laughs> you can see that he's a pro and I'm not a pro. <laughs> so we got the forward and back, what we call the, the, the sagittal plane. Now we're gonna work on the frontal plane side to side. So we're gonna go into our standard lateral lunge here. Okay, now the difference is when we're passing, you're gonna get into a lot of open knee positions, forward knee, inside knee. But for this one, for mobility purpose, we wanna get our knee forward, and then I'm gonna reach and then pull and reach, okay? You're gonna feel like a really strong contraction in your lats because it's gonna resist. So I'm grabbing this, pulling and reaching out and rotating. Gotcha. So it's rotating and here. Okay, you wanna try that? I'm gonna try that, yeah. I'm gonna do my right first. Mm -hmm. So first move is... Kind of a lateral yeah, lunge. Good. Yep, yeah. Okay. First move is here. Uh -huh, so the one leg straight and then reach out here and then pull your body. So you actually probably could go even wider. So that's good. The more advanced you are, the wider. Yeah, there you go. Good. Kind of just two or three seconds and then switch. So we're pulling there. Uh huh. Nice. Is it okay if my right foot's on the ground there? Yep, it's okay if you lift it as long as this leg's locked out for now. Yeah. You feel that stretch in the groin and your lat. Nice, so we're getting that thoracic rotation, the upper spine, as well as a hip external rotation. Nice, and then the other leg, let the foot do whatever it wants to do, whether it's uh, floating, strat flat, or whatever. So this is really good for, we all know when we step out, you gotta drop that inside shoulder versus letting the ball shank behind. And so people who have, po who have tight lats, cannot get into this position. All right, so we have to extend and internally rotate this side, okay? So that's our lateral reach. Our last one, um, let's, I'm gonna face this just so you guys probably get a better view here. The last one is we're gonna get into our passing stance, so feet generally uh, wider than the shoulder width apart. And I'm gonna internally rotate one knee at a time. Roll on the big toe while keeping here. So it's like a weighted internal rotation, okay? So what we're trying to also teach the body to feel safe is some of these, right? Maybe the, you're, you're dropping on one knee, but the ball ends up floating higher, and then I gotta play over my shoulder. You gotta feel safe in this internally rotated position. Otherwise, you're gonna get a strain on the medial side of the knee there. Okay, you wanna give it a shot? Yeah, same thing. So libero posture, nice. Mm-hmm. 
And this one for now, we want to keep one knee, just a force, to, just to in, increase. I mean, when we play, you'll open it up, but it kind of makes it more difficult to really work on that internal rotation here. So this is like a, a lot of hockey goalies probably do something like this. Very right? similar, yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. I also call this the volleyball stanky leg. Oh, stanky leg. <laughs> mm hmm Straight. Yeah. you gotta be mindful about keeping this one straight. Yeah. One yeah, we don't want to open it up too much for this exercise. Like, am I opening it up too much? Yeah, let's get your right knee forward. Uh-huh. So I'll kind of hold this in place. So if you have a partner, you just kind of press. Uh-huh. Yep, we're kind of alternating just two, three seconds. Feel it. I'm shaking over there. And you just feel all these little muscles here working super hard. Oh, I feel it right here. Is that my mm -hmm. glutes? Or right here, this is your groin. These are your adductors and your abductors there. Nice. And you see how it's got a nice lumbar rotation there too. Whew. Full body. I'm shaking. Oh, I feel warm already. Yeah. Oh my God. And so as you get warmer, we can do, we can do two versions. We can do controlled. Okay. Or we can do dynamic right before a game. So if you're on the court, you just feel your glute medius, which is a little ball right here. Yeah. This is responsible for knees, for tracking your knee, knee stability. You're gonna feel that light up. So if you wanna try the dynamic version, okay. see how that feels. Well, I know you got your knee. Oh, I can't. No, no I'm good. Because at first I was a little tight. Yeah. But now I feel pretty you feel good. loose? Okay. Yeah. So we're kind of, so uh-huh, so back. a little tempo. Try to keep your hips forward as you're turning. Yeah, there you go. You should feel the, the glute med light up a little bit. I think I'm opening up too much though. Just a little bit, but that, that'll come with time. Oh. Yeah. That feels good. Nice, good work. Good. So he, he's been citing something that um, a lot of us are gonna experience as we're first learning this, where when, our, uh, when, when we don't have as much limb independence, meaning be able to control one limb while telling the other limb one, that's gonna help us to develop that. But also when we have limited internal range, my hip has to open to make space for that. So if you can't go full motion, you can just go higher and go as far as you can without opening up. So if I can only go here before I start to open up, that's okay. And then build into a wider, bigger range of motion too, you can keep this knee here. Cause we, it's, it's purposely crowding space in the hip girdle. So that's what we want. All right, that wraps it up for the court. We're gonna go into the gym here and uh, let's get shredded. All right, let's do it.